All right, friends. So we've been playing the face game, right? The face game with cards, right? You always have to have two cards. And these cards give directions. Sometimes the directions aren't followed because they're covered up. We had words like dominant, recessive, homozygous, heterozygous, alleles. Well, today you're gonna learn the story of the dude that figured all that out. And what's amazing, he wasn't a scientist, at least not by trade. He didn't have a microscope and he did this a hundred years before DNA was even discovered by Watson and Crick and Franklin. This is the story of Gregor Mendel. Mr. Kovacs class. It's Mr. Kovacs class. You might learn how to talk. It's Mr. Kovacs class. He's interested too. It's Mr. Kovacs class. And he's super cool. It's Mr. Kovacs class. Yeah, Gregor Mendel. Okay, to give you some background, um, Mendel was a farmer in rural Austria. And um, he always wanted to be famous. And so uh, he accidentally came across the rules of the face game. What we know now is the rules he came across, which he came across kind of by accident, just by being observant, they are exactly the rules how genes and alleles work. And he did this without ever, you know, using a microscope or taking a science class or uh, without ever even knowing that genes existed or that DNA existed, he figured out the rules of how they work. So to present this to you today, I have put together a dramatic play called Mendel Rules. Part one, you'll watch the play. In part two, you'll go back and you'll read the script of the play and answer some questions. And in part three, you'll go back and review the life of Gregor Mendel, the father of modern genetics. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mendel Rules, the play about the story of the life of Gregor Mendel, written by Mr. Kobach, directed by Mr. Kobach, produced by Mr. Kobach, and starring Mr. Kobach as all of the parts in the play. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Mendel Rules. Scene one, the Mendel family farm in rural Austria, 1835. Gregor Mendel is a young boy talking with his father. Boy, quit complaining. Us Mendels are farmers. If you don't like it, maybe you should head up to the abbey to become a monk or something. That's the only way out of this life. Here I am, completely wasting. Farming's got me down. All inside, it's so frustrating. I want to be renowned. I feel as though nobody cares if I live or die. So I might as well begin to do something with my life. Become a monk. I'll become a monk. Scene two, the monastery. Austrian Alps, 1840. Gregor is called into the monastery abbot's office. Your holiness, you wanted to see me? Yes, my son, you have served the monastery well. You have been such a good monk. We would like to send you to Vienna, to the university, to study to become a teacher. Oh, they're in for surprise, they're in for a shock. In Vienna streets, there's so much culture and art. When they least expect it, when no one thinks I can, I'll make it there, I'll be the man. Scene three, Vienna at the university. Mendel falls in love with the big city of Vienna, 1844, but he does not fall in with his schoolwork, unfortunately. Vienna is awesome. The sights, the sounds, the smells. I love the art, the food, the culture, the people. I love being in a city. Oh, snap. I forgot to show up at class today to take my teacher's exams. Gregor, shame on you. 
You have failed all of your classes. You will never make it here in Vienna. Head back to the monastery in shame. I've taken too much for granted. I lost the chance that I had. University ended. I'm headed back feeling sad. Going back in shame. This is really lame. I should have done my best, but now my life's a mess. Scene four, the monastery, 1845. A tearful Mendel meets with that monastery abbot once again. Gregor. Shame on you. We gave you a chance and you blew it. For punishment, you must work. Work, work in the monastery gardens, growing crops for all of the other monks to eat. I'm so sorry, Your Holiness. I've always, always hated working on the farm. I'll try my best. When I went to school, I should have tried. Sent home in shame. I would have rather died. I'm back to the life that I didn't want. Punished for what I didn't become. Scene five, the Monastery Gardens, 1846. Mendel is back working on a farm, a job he hated as a young man. He spends hours alone with his plants, including his favorite, the peas. Working on the gardens isn't so bad. I especially love growing these peas. Their flowers are either a beautiful purple or a milky white. In fact, some days I talk with the pea plants. Howdy, old friends, my peas, how are you today? I enjoy that my flowers are majestic violet. My flowers are snowy white. I bet that your children wear a lovely lavender, a purple? Oh, not at all, in fact, all our children were purple, just like the grandpa. Yes, even our grandchildren were purple. Well, most of them anyway. Only had a few white flower puddles like the grandma. It makes no sense. It's like you passed on your white color, but it was somehow covered up by your offspring. Then it was uncovered again in the next generation. How can this be? Well, Gregor, you see that flower color is controlled by a gene, and you get one copy of each gene from each parent. If the gene is dominant, like purple flowers, it will cover up, not blend with the other gene. All my children received the white flower gene from me. However, they were all purple because purple was dominant and covered it up. I see. This is fantastic. Let me write this down. I will send this back to Vienna University. Maybe they will let me return to the big city. Maybe I can redeem myself and become famous after all. That's right. Here's how we pass our genes. It's happened here among the corn and beans. One factor comes from your mommy pea. The one from dad tells you what to be. If you want to know just how your traits arise, read my work and I bet you'd be surprised. Out there is my fame. It's waiting to be had. If you think I'll let it go, you're mad. We've got another P coming. Scene six, Vienna University, 1866. The university dean receives Mendel's findings about pea plants. He is not impressed. I'm not going to read this report by Gregor Mendel. I mean, guy was a total goof off when he was here at school. I'm not gonna waste my time with this. Well, I've said it before and I've said it again. If I would have studied, I'd be on the mend and everybody would have known my name. Wherever I go, wherever I rest, no one will know that my work was the best. I live my days not knowing what I could have been. Now I'm working on the gardens. I've got nothing to lose at all. I end my days in silence. My life's about to fall. My life, it's about to fall. Scene seven, The Monastery, 1884. Mendel is now very old and near the end. I am an old man. I have no family. I failed out of school. I spent my whole life working with pea plants. University has rejected me again. My whole life has been a mess. I've spent all my life working on some farm, working with, with pea plants. Now my whole life is gone. Learning the trick that lets genes get expressed. Now dying unfamous has left me totally depressed. It is now time to die. <laughs>
Scene eight, Vienna University, 1910. A scientist at the university, Dr. Hugo de Vries, stumbles across Mendel's old findings, and it explains how heredity works. Oh, whoa, 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 what do we have here? I've been trying to figure out how genes work for so long, but look at this records about heredity in pea plants. I can't believe this guy Mendel never became famous. I'll publish his results along with my own work. This is fantastic. Mendel rules. The end.